I'm Pastor Jamal, um, Tierra's husband, Saints father, lead pastor all about change, CEO of PCP Entertainment, and currently a blue card ambassador at AU Health in Augusta. And um, Tierra asked me, uh, how did I let go of my limiting uh, thinking, my limited thoughts? And uh, my answer to that is I got tired. I got sick and tired of being sick yeah. and tired. And I decided to win. I made a decision to win. I even have a message called I Decided to Win, and I live it, you know, every day. But um, when I was a little boy, I was always made fun of for how I talked. Um, and I didn't even know that I had a condition or issue or whatever until I was an adult. My mom told me that I had uh, I had ear infections very frequently as a small child to the point to where it affected my speech, my speaking. And because, you know, speaking and hearing is associated yeah. with each other. So the doctor told her that I had a speech delay or, or I was going to have a speech delay or something or whatever. Um, like, I, I don't know if it was an unofficial mm -hmm. diagnosis or whatever, but um, as a child, I was always made fun of when I would speak. So, you know, I just stopped talking because I didn't yeah. want to be made fun of. And, but I, but I always was into the arts. I, I started acting first and then I got into music. So even though I didn't like talking, I still had an outlet connected to my passion. And I think me doing my passion is what birthed confidence for me to actually start speaking more because the more that you do your passion, the more you're going to end up yes. talking anyway. You know, people are going to want to ask you questions, do interviews like this. So from doing plays to starting to do music, my confidence became more and more. And, you know, then one day the guy that everybody made fun of for talking was heard more than all of those people yeah. that was making fun of me for talking. And I, you know, in hindsight, looking back at it now, I know it was just the enemy yeah. trying to shut me up at an early age. Because if he messes our minds up at an early age, then, you know, he can stop us from operating in our purpose and walking to our destiny as an adult. And that's why we have to rise above yeah. what happened to us as children. So that's, that's my answer to how I started letting go of limiting beliefs is I decided that yes. I wanted to win. That is so good. And I can relate to that because I used to get picked on as well. Uh, people would say, why you talk so deep? You talk like a man and things like that. And that really made me, hey, Danita, that really made me not want to talk, not want to express myself. I know I used to hate like going up and presenting things in school. I will get so nervous. My hands would start shaking. But I mean, look at me now. It's like he said, I had to decide to win and not care what those people or what the bullies were saying about me and really just embrace that speaking is what I'm supposed to do. And when I found out that speaking was my passion and stuff, it's like now, you know, if I stumble over my words or if I do sound like a man, it's like mm -hmm. I embrace that because I'm OK with my speech now. Back yeah, then, right. you know, I was like, oh, God, they're going to say I sound like a man. Oh, no. What am I going to do? And now it's like, if someone was to say that to me now, I'm like, child, whatever. I don't care. You know, I can laugh about it and go on because I finally came to that place. Like you said, Pastor Jamal, where you decided to win. You were sick and tired of thinking that way and thinking bad about yourself and, want, and caring what other people thought. And you were just embracing your purpose. And I just love that. So I definitely can relate to that. That's right. So how did you, oh, do yeah. you have anything to say? How did you let go of your limiting beliefs? You know, like I said before in one of the other episodes, it was just, it wasn't something that I put in myself to say, I'm just not going to do it anymore. I really believe it was a download from God. You know, just his wisdom, his guidance, yeah. his clarity that, you know, it was like, you have to do this. It's something that you can't just suppress yourself anymore like I used to. So if it was yeah. I probably would still be in that little hermit stage or mm -hmm. that I'm not, you know, walking fully in my purpose or being that outspoken purpose, that person. So, I mean, that's what I think happened to me. 
I, it wasn't on, it wasn't me. Yeah. Wasn't at all. Yeah, it was Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and and right. so, yeah, so it was Jesus just downloading and like, girl, you got to do this. You're supposed to, you know, speak up and speak your truth. I love that. I love that. I think it goes both ways. Sometimes God is just like, look. You you got to do this, no matter if you want to or not. And other times it's like we get to that point where we're just like sick of this, sick of feeling that way, sick of thinking that way. And although it's a journey to get your mind okay. in the, on the right track, you're determined and you desire it. So when you're determined and you have that desire to be better, it's like nothing can stop you. I'm not saying you won't slow up. I'm not saying you won't have your days, but you have decided to think better, to be better. So that's just amazing. So um, Pastor Jamal, I wanted to know how, how do you think, um, why do you think it's so hard to change our, our beliefs? Like, why do you think it's so hard for a lot of people in the world? And I know when I first started getting into the process, it was really hard not to think negatively or not to like beat yourself up about the things that you've done or where you're at in your life. So why do you think it's, it's so hard sometimes to like change your mindset? Well, I think, well, I think that, you know, it's programming, you know, we're programmed all our lives. Like, I don't know how many people watching this are familiar with the movie yeah. The Matrix, but this is The Matrix. You know, this is The Matrix. And I've decided to take the red yeah. pill. You know, I don't want to live in a world that someone else made for me to only benefit the creators. You know, I believe that the creator, you know, God wants all of us to win to have peace, joy, love, to have financial prosperity, to succeed yeah. in life. I don't believe we're supposed to be on the earth broke, busted, and disgusted. So, you know, we have to we have to start looking at life in a different way. We have to change our perception. Um, anytime that you make a decision to do something in life, there's going to yeah. be resistance. And I think that's what trips most people up is they're like, I'm going to start this business or I'm going to be a happier person, a more positive person, or I'm going to give my life to God. And they think that it's going to be simple. And then when they find out that it's not simple, they just yeah. give up altogether. When instead, if you just say, come hell or high water, this yeah. is going to happen. This is how it's going to be. I'm going to make the decision already. And then I'm going yeah. to do whatever it takes to reach and achieve my goal. And I'm not going to be so attached to the outcome, but I'm going to be atta attached to God and who he created me to be. And however it goes, you know, I'm going to give my best and yeah. never give up. Like one thing with, you know, you and I, we're never going to give up. Like no. that's not an option. Suicide yeah, is not an option. Depression is not an option. Poverty is not an option. Renting yeah. is not an option. Like, I could go into so many realms, you know what I'm saying, where there were times in my life where I had to look, you know, adversity in the face and say, you got to get the hell out of my way because God already told me what I can have. So every time you tell me what I can't have, I know that you are a liar and a defeated foe. And for the very reason that I know that you know that I know that I can have what I want to have in life, that is why you're telling me that I can't have it. Oh, God. <laughs> you bad over oh, I come to destroy your limiting yeah, beliefs and tonight. that's the thing. Like you said, the programming and just that routine, you really just got to stand up to every thought, everything, and, you know, speak that you will win. You will do this. You will be who God called you to be. It don't matter where you are right now. It don't matter what you've done. Right. You take that stand. And you got to have, like, that warrior spirit. Like, that spirit, like, no matter what you said, come right. hell or how water, I'm going to overcome this addiction. I'm going to overcome this insecurity. I'm going to overcome these thoughts that are terrorizing my mind because I know who is in me. I know I got the that's power. Right. I know he gave me the power. And I feel like that's how I have overcome everything, every addiction, every mental um, 
issue, everything. It was just like I had that spirit in me like, no, you cannot have me. I've been sick too long in my mind. I've been through hell too long in my mind. I done put myself through enough hell, and now I choose to live. And I think that's what it is. We have to right. every day, that's and right. Jamal, me and Jamal talk about this, Pastor Jamal, excuse me, talk about this all the time. We have to every day make an intention to have in our mind that we will live. No matter what money is in our bank, no matter what mistakes we have made, no matter what people are saying about us, we choose to think positive. We choose to speak life into ourselves. We choose to live in this moment because we don't know if we'll have the next moment, right? Yeah, you live. We don't know. Right. We don't know. So why right. spend another day? Why spend another hour? Why exactly. spend another minute depressed or broken or anything like that? And it takes time to That's heal. Right. I'm not saying that it doesn't take time, you know, and we have our up and down days. But the mindset, the heart set, the spirit set says, you know, I'm going right. to choose to live right. and live my life abundantly, no matter how long it takes, no matter what obstacles I face. So it's like right. once you get into that routine of thinking those things and having that attitude, you know, it gets easier at time as time goes on. But like I always say in the other ones, we've spent so many years, you know, being this way, right? So, again, building that mindset right. and letting go of these limiting beliefs aren't going to happen overnight, but it's just that intention of every day. I'm going to let go That's of right. whatever belief doesn't it's serve me. And it's not that belief. Yes. It's not like that yes. belief won't come again, but I choose to say, shut up. You can't exactly. have me no more. You can't have me. Yes, and I think that is I think that is the biggest trick of the enemy is that you think that with giving your life to Christ or getting married or a friendship or a business or whatever, that there's not going to be any difficulties or any hardships. And I come here to tell you that Satan is going to come right in your face and tell you that you can't have this, be right. this, or do this. And if you are weak, if you are weak minded, and I'm not an insensitive person. I've went to counseling. I've yeah. went to therapy. I've suffered depression right. and anxiety. I used to have to take colonoscopies just to yeah. go to sleep at night. So please don't, 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 don't look at me now, yeah. <laughs> oh God, and think that I don't know the struggle or that I can't uh, relate to you because you're looking at someone yeah. that was homeless and sleeping in in his car, sleeping on the ground in L.A., my pillow was my book bag, then coming back to Augusta, sleeping in the church that me and my wife are preaching in, to having a house built from the ground up, that takes releasing and letting go of limiting thoughts and deciding to win. That kind of thing does not just happen overnight, and it does not come from, you know, just saying, hey, I'm going to have a house, and poof, right. then you have a house. You know, there was so many, there was so much resistance you know, to that happening that there are so many thoughts that were yeah. limiting that I had to say, nah, I don't want that. I'm not going to listen to that. Oh, that sounds familiar. I've heard that same thought all my life. Oh, got to let that mm -hmm. one go too. Oh, I don't want to hang with those thoughts either. Y'all yeah. don't serve me. You may be familiar, but you don't serve me. You know, I may be used to hearing these thoughts, but they don't make me a better person. So I'm going to go with the thoughts that, that make me a better person. Like I'm yeah. wonderfully and fearfully made. I am great. I am mighty. I am brave. I am handsome. Yeah. I do look good. I do feel good. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. You see, these are the thoughts that float in my mind that I pull right. to every day. It doesn't mean that I don't have negative thoughts. And that's what people don't understand. You know, you, you, you become depressed because you choose depression, mm -hmm. essentially. Not to be insensitive, but what I'm saying is we choose what we're going to continue to think. You know, we have thoughts rise up, but yes. we get to choose what right. we're going to continue to think. We get to choose who we're going to be around. We get to choose if we're going to stay in a church that is not going to encourage me, that's going to tell me I'm going to bust hell wide open 24-7. I can choose a church that's going to tell me that God has a great calling and destiny on my life and he loves me. And there's things that I, that I need to change, but he loves me. You see the difference between those two? And, and that is, you know, what you have to do. Like, I remember my brother Eric Clark, he said, I get to choose how I feel about it. Yeah. And that is the truth. 
We get to choose how we feel about everything. That is getting out the matrix. That's taking that red pill. I get to choose about, I get to choose how I feel about the molestation. I get to choose how I feel about the rape. I get to choose how I feel about the divorce or the breakup or failing out of school. I get to choose how I feel about it. And I can look at it as a life lesson and be empowered and say, God trusted me to go through it to help somebody else and to be a motivational speaker or a pastor or just a productive person. Or I can choose to be the victim and have a depressed right. life. It all starts with a choice. You know, it all starts with a choice. Yes. Wow, that's so good. Yes. Stomp that serpent out. That's right. Yeah, Rise up. you got to have that warrior spirit. you got to, every day, you got to be ready to fight. And I don't mean that you're expecting bad things to happen, but just be ready to stand your ground and let everything that's trying to take you down know that it ain't going to happen. You know, that's just, like you said, it's all about a choice. Like, I look back on the depression that I had and the anxiety that I had and, and suicidal, thoughts that, suicidal thoughts that I had and not that they weren't valid. It's just I focused on those things too much. When I think about it, if I could have just got into the routine, even if I didn't feel it, even if I even even if I felt so depressed, learning how to just think on just one good thought and let those other thoughts drown right. out. Like, right. like, oh, I just, you know, I used to, oh, I just feel so bad. Oh, this and that, that when I could just been like, I am great. I am great. I am great. And just focus on that and then you know, you will feel better as you continue to say that over and over as you get up and start moving and, and get out of that atmosphere of depression, even just going outside and letting the sun and or the breeze, you know, feel on your skin and on your face. It's like those simple things, uh -huh. taking a shower or, or going for a walk or something like that. Those simple things will switch your focus and make you feel lighter as a person, you know? So it's like not drowning. I know we're not trying to be insistent, but not drowning in the depression, but making a conscious, intentional, intentional movement and decision to switch those thoughts and to get into a place where you can feel better and do things that are going to make you feel better. You know what I'm saying? And he right. wants to say she's going to join from Eric's phone because, yeah, it keeps kicking her out. You know, the devil don't want this to go up, but we're going to keep on doing it. This Everyone's thing is for real. This phone. thing is a movement. This thing, free to be us, is needed. Like, God just spoke it to me one night, and it's like, he was like, you need to do this. This is what you're supposed to do, and I just have to run with it. And it's all for the glory of God. It's all to save people. It's all to give them a place where they can speak up and speak their truth as well. So we got to keep on going with it. So That's Pastor right. Jamal, uh, what advice right. can you give our viewers? I know you say it's a choice and everything like that, but could you give us some more tips and advice on how we can strengthen our minds daily where, where you know, we can just keep working towards letting go of these limiting beliefs so we can live in the fullness of our purpose. Because I feel like you are living in your purpose and it wasn't always like that. You had these limiting beliefs. You, you have dealt, and I've seen it for myself. I've been with you for 10 years. You have dealt with so many things, so much resistance, so much adversity. And yet, even though you were going through all of that, you still could have a smile on your face. You still could reach out and help other people. You still could speak life, you know, into me and to other people and have that caring heart, but also be bold and stand on your beliefs and stuff. So you definitely can relate and you definitely know about what each person is dealing with, especially with mental health and all of these things. So what tips can, what more tips could you give them that they can take with them um, to start applying it as they, you know, strengthen their mindset? Because we all are renewing and strengthening our mindset every day, you know? Well, I like how you asked the question um, and you, you phrased it, strengthening your mind. And that makes me think of exercise. So the same way with our bodies, how we have to eat right and we have to, you know, do push-ups, sit-ups, whatever. If you go to the gym and actually yeah. hit the weights, you know, you're strengthening your body. So you have to strengthen your mind. So we have to, we have to first start eating healthily yeah. mentally, you know. So what I'm seeing 
what I'm seeing is what I'm eating yeah. mentally, what I'm reading mm -hmm. and what I'm hearing. So, 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 so I have to read books that are going to yeah. empower me. I have to watch shows that are going yeah. to encourage me. I'm going to have to surround myself with people that are speaking yeah. life. If I'm if I'm surrounded by nine broke people, I'm right. gonna be number ten. If I'm surrounded by nine sick, depressed people that's ready to kill themselves, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be number ten. I don't care how strong you are. If you hang out with sick people every day for a year, in some shape or form, they're gonna You're take right. a toll on you. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I think I. <laughs> I think that is the major problem because it's it's a spiritual issue first, you know, because yeah. I am a pastor. It is a spiritual issue at first um, because we all are spirits and we have bodies. So if I'm hanging around a bunch of nasty spirits, they're going to affect me no matter how much I love them, no matter how much, you know, how long I've known them, whether they're family, um, you know, parents, siblings, so-called friends church members, whoever, if they're sick and they don't want what's best for me, I'm going to have to subtract myself from right. that equation. And I'm going to have to read books that, that are going to empower me. Like right now, I'm reading Crazy Faith by Mike Todd. And then I have another book by Miles Monroe, you know, and I have another book called Crushing mm -hmm. by TDJ. All of these books, in addition to the Bible, are giving me life, giving me power, giving me tools, because I'd rather learn from somebody else's uh, stuff than have to go through yeah. more stuff to learn the wisdom. So, you know, that's what I would do. You know, a great model of once told me, Kevin Trudeau, who do you listen to? People that have what you want. And in this day and age, I'm seeing everybody follow everybody. Like, I just recently unfollowed so many people because I don't, yeah. you can't lead me. You might be doing something positive, but you ain't on my level. So why would I follow somebody yeah. that can't lead me? You know, and it's not arrogance. It's 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 common. Should be common sense that I'm gonna follow people that should lead me. I'm not on the internet for entertainment. I'm on the internet to grow and to help other people grow. So you know, I'm spending my time watching TV. And it's only, you know, reality, drama, mm -hmm. and mess. You know, that's not that's not helping me. Now, entertainment is cool. It's good to laugh. It's good to watch drama sometimes. It's good to watch action movies. You know, I like sci-fi thrillers and all this stuff, the alien takeover. You know, what I'm saying is we should spend more time feeding our mind and our spirit with positive things, yeah. positive movies, positive books positive friends and voices in our lives. I think everyone should have a mentor. Even if your mentor is someone that you watch from afar by reading their books or watching their television show. Um, I've never met Bishop Jakes, but I feel like I have because I've read so much material and I've watched so many um, messages and interviews that I have a good idea of what he represents. And I think I encourage everybody to find somebody that has what you want even if it's just somebody that has peace, it doesn't have to be about, you know, success and money, cars and clothes, but a peace, yeah. a peace of mind. You know, the greatest, greatest teacher is Jesus. But I know we live in a world where everybody does not believe in Jesus. And I'm the type of person where you don't have to believe in Jesus yeah. for me to help you. You know, I do encourage you. I encourage right. you to believe in Jesus. But if you are an atheist, an agnostic, a Buddhist, a Muslim, or whatever, I'm not going to argue with you, debate with you, or feel like I can't talk to you or have a conversation with you. I'm still going to be a light and a positive person to you. And I feel like if you do believe in Jesus, you should be able to have a conversation yeah. with other people. You should be able to talk with them. You should be able to be an example of whatever you believe. Because if what you believe is right, you're going to be able to right. love any and everyone. That's right. That is so true. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, she said, Denita said, Zachy brought I unfollowed so many who are only about doom and gloom. I need positive in my life. Yes, you need that positive because, like Pastor Jamal said, everything yeah. that you look at, everything that you hear, it goes into you whether you believe it or not, and it affects you. And if you're putting negativity and drama yeah. and all of these things always in your mind all the time, because life is a balance, like you said, you can't watch 
movies and, and action movies or whatever the case. You can do that sometimes because we're not just supposed to, you know, we're supposed to have fun as well and be entertained, but it's all about that balance. But you should be feeding yourself more positive stuff and looking at people who have what you want and are really in a good place. You should be studying them way more than you would even entertain somebody that ain't doing nothing and ain't trying to help nobody and, and things like that. And I think it comes right. to a point where you have to develop a standard for yourself. Like, what are you going to tolerate? You know what I'm saying? That you have control over. Yeah. There what you go. Who there we go. And I think a lot of people, a lot of people don't know that you get to yeah. decide that. Like the thing that you have. <laughs> you, get, you get to yeah. decide. Which exactly. you're gonna tolerate. The that you have control over. Yeah, like, of course, things happen in your life that you are out of your control, but you have the power to, 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 um, see how you're gonna react. You have the power to see, are you still gonna have a good attitude and, and be able to work with whoever you have to work with for a bigger picture and things like that. So, it's all about having that standard. Like I said, who am I going to allow in my circle? I mean, when did, uh, who, what am I going to give to, what am I going to put in, in my circle and in my place for me to get to a better, better state in my life? Uh, why, I think I used to get to a place where I self-sabotage myself and, and I have that mindset where I, I'm losing and thinking no, ne negatively before I even do what I'm doing. And if, if you're right. already before yeah, you if you're try. already going into something with you a negative mindset, or you're going into yeah, a relationship you already, already thinking somebody's going to hurt you, going to a friendship thinking negative, going into a business thinking negative, then ultimately all you're going to get is negative out. So it's just about having that standard of of doing good, doing things that are going to put you in a better position position to help yourself and help others like when when why are we so like why are we so hard on ourselves and what i mean by that is why do we downgrade ourselves so much like like you know what i mean like in the community i think and in the, in the, in the situations that we put ourselves in that are in our control the people that we let um, um, hurt us and, and affect us so much. Like, why do we do that? We have to get to a standard where we know that we deserve the best. We know that we deserve more than what we have right now. No matter what mistakes we have made, if we intentionally are trying to do our best and live a life that God will be pleased with, then we do have to have that mindset and that standard that we deserve the best. We deserve what God has for You're us. Right. And it's not being cocky. It's not being arrogant. Right. But at what point are we going to shift our mindset to be like, yes, I am who God called me to be. I am great. I'm going to do what God said I'm going to do. And it's not about thinking that you have the big head or that you're better than everybody else. But God put each of us on this earth for a specific reason. We weren't born just because everybody has some type of purpose in this world so you we got to stop getting we got to stop being in a place where we down talk ourselves we downgrade ourselves we put ourselves in positions that are not beneficial for us we stay in relationships we stay in friendships we stay in places that do not serve us any good and it's probably because we have these limiting beliefs and then we don't feel good about ourselves Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is what makes me have peace in the midst of people disrespecting me, treating me like I'm less than because I know that you're only projecting onto me. On, <laughs> how, how, you, how you feel about yourself. So then that that gets rid of the, the limiting belief that my haters are stopping me from what God has for me because the truth is your haters right. have no power. No one can stop what God has for you, right. except yourself. You are the only somebody that can stop yourself from having the life that you want because no one else has that kind of power. This thing right here, man, this thing right here is so powerful. Y'all have no idea. Man, you could think your way yeah. into some blessings. You could think your way into some purpose. You could think your way into some destiny. You could think your way into 
poverty and you can think your way into yes. riches. I mean, it's all about what are you thinking? Because what I'm thinking is going to become what I'm doing and what I'm doing is going to become yes. my lifestyle. So then you have somebody that has thought, you know, negative for so long. And then they'll look at somebody that has thought positive, but used to think negative, but they didn't thought positive long enough. Now they look like they've only thought positive, but the person that's negative still doesn't know what that positive light has gone through just to feel Ooh, that way about boy. themselves. You know, I put something on my realtor story Talk that said the master has um the master has failed more than the beginner has even tried so if we're not even going to if we're not even Talk going to try right. to think better and and intentionally put our you know intentionally like speak good about ourselves and speak life into ourselves and encourage ourselves and you're not even going to try because you're already thinking that it's not going to work then how are you going to pro progress but when yes. you have the master of yourself being a master and expert in yourself then even if you did have a bad day today and you didn't think the best thoughts but guess what my attitude is i may have failed a little bit today but tomorrow right. or right now in this second I'm going to think better. I'm going to adjust my attitude and my thoughts. And I'm telling you, that's something that I work on every day. Like, you know, I have my days where I'm like not thinking the best. And then it's like, okay, I can't think about that. Yeah, I didn't think my best. I may not did everything right. But right now in this second, I'm adjusting. I'm going to think better now. I'm going to speak life now into myself. I'm not going to... Stay dwelling on what I did, but I'm going to learn from whatever I did that was not right so that next time I know to do better. Next time I'm going to, you know, accomplish hey. whatever it was that I needed to accomplish. Right. And that won't happen again because it's never a loss. It's never really a mistake. It's just a lesson. So we have to really, and I'm speaking on that for some reason, right. intentionally We've got to do our best to think better, to speak better. If that negative thought comes up, we got to be like, no, I destroyed that. And whatever it's saying, it's not going to happen. You got to say that it is going to happen because Pastor Jamal, I did not realize back in the day how powerful our minds are. Like you said, you can really speak yourself into mm -hmm. blessings. You can speak yourself also, though, into poverty and depression and all of those things. So it's a constant thinking of your mind of really thinking about what you want to happen and not what you don't want to happen. <laughs> yeah, what are you, like Iyanla Van Vance said, what do you want? You know, what do you want? And, and while we talking, did, did they send a request? Did yeah, Eric send a request? Yeah, her out. But she said, I mean, she is joining me and yeah, she's so um, communicating. So uh, my girl, our sister Kiwana, she's still on the chat and she's still here and she's still part of Free to Be Us. But for some reason, this connection just keeps on taking her out. But she's That's staying right. on it. And I appreciate that, girl. Because some people would have been like, man, I'm tired of this. I'm giving up. But she's still joining the conversation through the chat. So I appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate the conversation good. Danita's having with us and everybody who's joining and did log on. We appreciate it so much. <laughs> Lord, yes, Lord. I think that uh I think that the issue is with the negative thoughts and thinking negatively and not really wanting to change that. I think people really do want to think positive, but it's because you've been doing something so long. So I I I plan to bring this up about the example of the elephant, the yes. elephant analogy, the circus elephant. So, you know, because we're powerful beyond measure. You know, I think our greatest fear is not that we're inadequate, but it's that we're more than enough that we're powerful beyond measure. So there's an elephant in all of us. You know, an elephant is this big, giant animal. If it steps on you, yes. you're dead. Like, yeah, it, I, I, you know, only Jesus could bring you back <laughs> after the elephant stumps on, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, an elephant is a very yeah. calm animal, you know? They're not out here trying to get into fights or whatever, you know? They sit there eating, you know, hanging with their family, they're chill. And I think naturally, we're all like elephants. Mm -hmm. We're these big, powerful creatures, and we're powerful without even yeah. trying to be powerful. But... If you traumatize somebody at a young age, 
you can chain them up like the circus yeah. elephant. So what they do with circus elephants at a young age, they chain them down to the ground. And, you know, the elephant tries and tries and tries and tries and tries and tries to get away, tries to walk away, tries to break the chain. Then at that age, at that size, the elephant is not strong enough. So the elephant grows up and becomes an adult. And, you know, the, the reality is if the elephant wanted to, now right. he can break away. He can break the chain easily. But because in his mind, he re oh. in mind. <laughs> because, because in his mind or in her mind, the elephant remembers that he couldn't break the chain. She couldn't break the chain when they were a child. They don't even try. They don't even attempt. They, they don't even put in motion because they're going off the memory of, I right. couldn't do this before. I wasn't strong enough before. And I think that is what's going on with our nation, with our generation, with the older generation, with the younger generation, because they've seen so much mm -hmm. failure, but you have to fail yes. forward. So instead of looking at it as failure, just look at it as experience that I got stronger, that I got wiser, that I got bolder, <laughs> oh God. So now I can go into the lion's den and turn him yeah. into a pussycat because God told me to shut every limiting yeah. belief mouth, oh God. Because because the, the, rivers of, uh, the rivers of life are flowing out of my belly now. And that's how you got to look at it. I was bullied. I was made uh, fun of for how I talked. You know, I was called soft and lame, but they ain't calling me that now. I done been on BET, H1, TV1, all in this city. I done turned down a record deal. I done met with Def Jam twice. I done performed at the at the biggest place in my city with, with, with Waka Flocka Flame and introduced by Lil Duval. You know what I'm saying? Because I decided that I'm not going to live off of the memory of my childhood or even the negative things that happened in yeah. my adult life. But I decided that God has given me strength. Not my strength. God has given me strength. And I'm a strong elephant. And I can blow my trunk. And I can break that chain. And I can leave the circus. And I can go wherever I want to go now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the mindset that we have to have. We got to have that mindset for real. Yes, so. But that elephant analogy is just so like deep. It's like he could break, he could break the chain, but he was just trained to sit on that chain for too long. But tonight, no matter what you've been taught, no matter what routines you are stuck in, no matter what has happened in your past, tonight is the night that you viewers who are listening release those chains. You got to release those chains. You got to put yes, your Lord. chains back put it yes, on this Lord. floor tonight and make a decision that you will not go back yes, to Lord. that negative thinking. I did say the negative thoughts would would not come, but I did say that you have made up in your mind that you will not let them resonate in your mind anymore. You will not let them torment you. You will not let what you have thought in the past, what people have told you in the past, affect your destiny because everybody on here is too valuable. You've been dealing with depression and battling that for too long now. You've been dealing with anxiety and all these things and bullying and peer pressure and all these things for too long now. And now you got to stare it in the, stare it in the face and look it in the eyes and say that I am going to win. I'm going to defeat this. I'm going to break That's these right. chains. I will not live right. like that anymore because I have made a conscious decision that I'm going to strengthen uh, my mind. I am going to be a winner. I am going to accomplish what I'm supposed to accomplish because I do not want to see another person die of suicide. I do not want to see another person just torment it in their no, mind. Right. We realize how many of the youth, how many of adults it, uh, anyway are tormented in their minds because of the things that they are fearful of the things that has happened in their past what they've always believed and now god is saying in 2022 it's time to switch those beliefs it's time to change those beliefs because yes, 2022 Lord. cannot be the same for any of us god is calling all of us it's, to it's change right. Work on ourselves, not focus so much on what everybody else is doing and trying to correct them, but yes, working on ourselves. Lord. Because if everybody worked on themselves, 
then we wouldn't have time to focus on that other person. You know what I'm saying? And it wouldn't be so much drama and so much division and all that because we all are working to be better. Yes, Lord. I'm yes, serious, guys. Lord. 2022 cannot be the same. And I'm speaking to myself, too. I'm with it with all of y'all. I'm in the same boat, in the same journey with all of you. It has to. We have to go to a higher level in our mind. We have to go to a higher level in our hearts, in our spirits, and in the physical realm, in our careers, in our dreams, in our yes, visions. Sir. We have right. to go to a higher standard. So when them negative thoughts come, I don't care what you've been taught. I don't care what your family, what the people at school, what anybody is saying about you. You have to say today, tonight is the night that I'm going to do my best to think on higher things, to think on positive things, to encourage myself. If nobody else encourages me, if no one else tells me they love They're me, right. I got to have enough strength in myself to say I love me. I encourage me. I can do this. No matter how many times I fail, the next day I'm going to get back up. I'm going to dust myself off and I'm going to keep on going because you only fail when you quit. And like we say, quitting is not right. an option. There you go. Quitting is not an option. It don't matter how many times you fail. That's going to make you better. The failure is going to make better. I'm yes, so Lord. thankful for all the times I fell. I'm yes, so Lord. thankful for all the times I went back to drugs and relapsed and went back to sex and relapsed because it made me yes, better. Lord. I know now what signs not to take. I know now what calls not to answer. I know now what places not to go because I know myself more. And the only way you can know yourself more is by right. failing. It's by making the not so good decisions. So then you know better. If you always did everything right, how would you learn? How would you grow? How would you be able to relate to people who are suffering, who are addicts, who are dealing with all of these crazy things in their mind if you were never once there? So it's time for the shame to go right. away of what you've done, of what you've been through, of what happened. We all have been through crazy things. We all have put ourselves in crazy things. But I'm telling you tonight, 2022 has got to be the year we let go of these limiting beliefs. We make a conscious decision to strengthen our minds that no matter what happens, no matter what thoughts do play in my mind, I have the ability, I have the power to Think better. I do have that power. Realize you do have that power. You could be sick right now in your body, but if you keep speaking that healing, if you keep speaking that healing over your life, you will get oh. healed. You can fight That's right. suicidal thoughts. That's right. it's just don't do it. It doesn't matter how many times the enemy says to do it or how many thoughts you have. Oh, I want to kill myself. Oh, I want this pain to go away. No, that pain doesn't last forever. You will get over it. The only way you won't get over it is if you yeah, give it. Friend. If you give in to those thoughts, if you give in to taking all them pills yeah, and killing yourself or shooting your brains out or cutting yourself and bleeding out, that is the only way you will fail. That's the only way is if you decide to do it but if you don't do it and you fight against it and say these suicidal thoughts you got to get the hell out of here i rebuke this in the name of jesus i will live. i will not right. die. you will not take me out because i got I'm, the and I'm going through all of these yeah. suicidal thoughts i'm going through all of this depression and anxiety or whatever it is because god got something great for me and i wouldn't be going through all of this hell if it wasn't if god didn't have a bigger plan for me you know what i'm saying the devil the enemy challenge right. don't mess with right. anybody who doesn't have a great calling on their life. You know, the bullies and stuff like that, they pick on you right. because you're different and because they know that you're going to be great. Even if they don't really know it inside subconsciously, they know you're going to be great. And that's why we got picked on so much. That's right. That's why. That is why the people who are dealing with bullying right now get picked on because you are great. And once you know that you're great and that's the reason why they're doing it, you can hold your head up higher. You can know that it doesn't matter what they say about me because I love me. And once you get to that place where you love you, I'm telling you, it don't matter what nobody say. It don't matter who don't support you. It don't matter how many likes you don't get. You still, you still can walk in that freedom because you are okay with yourself and because you know yourself on a level that only God knows you on. Woo! Jesus. 
All right. I Whoa. Rent, Hello. <laughs> I wanna, I wanna, I wanna recognize what Kiwana said, cause Kiwana's yes. co-host here, and she said something earlier, and and it was powerful. She said, "Whoever has your ear has your heart Woo! and your mind." That's good. Sir. And I truly, and I truly believe, yeah, that goes back to who are you hanging around, who are you listening to, what are you reading, what are you watching. People think that they can, they can eat junk. And not have right. junk in them, but you you put it you put it you put it in you. So then it's gonna be in you, and you're gonna have to deal with it until you release it. You know that's why we're naming this head and go of limiting beliefs. So this is like taking a big old number two, y'all. We releasing it. Some of us gotta do a number two, a number one. Some of yeah, us gotta throw up, throw up. You know what I'm saying? Some some stuff some stuff is not meant to be yeah. digested. Uh huh. You don't. You don't have. We don't got two stomachs like cows. You know we can't right. eat grass. You know we can eat cows, but we can't eat. <laughs> so you gotta know what you can digest. You know. You know what works for you and what don't. Come on now. He don't. He doesn't love you. He's not gonna marry you. She doesn't love you. She's not gonna marry you. They're not going to believe in you, bro. They're not gonna support you, sis. But there's people all over yeah. the world that will. There is a husband for you. There yeah. is a wife for you. There is a church for you. There is a business for you. But you gotta regurgitate. You got to throw up. You gotta pee pee. You gotta boo boo all yeah. the mess out. So you can so you can process that this is your husband, this is your wife, these are your best friends. Because if we still got junk going on the inside of us, we're gonna have the best thing ever right in front of us. The best church ever, the best wife ever, the best husband ever, the best friend ever, the greatest opportunity ever, and we're not gonna notice it and we're gonna miss it. But I declare in 2022 that everybody under the sound of our voice on free to be, be us tonight, and whoever watches the replay, they will will yeah. seize their opportunity. They will see who they're supposed to have in their life, and they will operate in their purpose. You will not yeah. miss it. You are not going to miss that opportunity this year or any other year moving forward. It's going to happen for you, and God is about yeah. to blow your Oh, God. He blew my oh, mind last God. night. Eric, where, where's Eric Clark at? He blew me and Tierra and Eric's mind yeah. last night. 24 hours ago, all three of our minds was blown. God moved. He shifted the old out, brought in the new, brought in what it was supposed to be, sat or the old. God. Because we were prepared. We was praying before the meeting. We had a focus. We don't know what's going to happen, but guess what? We are going to we're going to react the way God wants us to react. When you go into something praying about it and thinking positive, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Feel, yes, no matter Lord. What is Come on. No matter what is even happening right there in front of you, when you go in there and you're prepared and you're praying and you have this aura about you that, hey, no matter what, no matter how it turns out, I'm going to be okay because I know who is the orchestrator of my life. I know who leads my life and I will. <laughs> I will be on top. Okay. I, this thing will turn around for me. Why? Because I have I have thought it already because I have spoken already because I believe right. it. Like I feel like I'm an atmosphere shipper. Like when I come in, things got to change. Yeah. Things got to get in order. Yeah. Why? Because I believe it. If I don't believe it, it's not going yes, to get yes, in order. Lord. But when I come in, I know I have joy. It oozes out of me. Pastor Jamal has joy. Kiwana yes, has joy. Sir. It oozes out of us. And we could be in a room full of darkness, but guess what? That little light that we got. Come on, gonna somebody. Darkness, Come on, away. somebody. We're going to be able to pull up other people and say, hey, we've been there too. We've been we're in the garden too. Up now. We've done so much too. Guess now. what? If we can get pulled up, so can you. And that is what we're telling all of y'all tonight. That's right. It is our time. It is our speed. Hey, it, it is shifted. our moment. The live so has shifted. This fair shift yes. to shift our own atmosphere. Our own houses to be places yes, of, Lord. Food, of love, yes, Lord. of joy because of what we put in the atmosphere. What we put in the atmosphere. That's right. That's right. 
That's right, because God God holds us accountable. And side note, this live is just shit. This live, y'all don't hear me. Let me let, let me get let us get some hearts up in here. This live has just shifted. We got P. Shirley Global in the building. We got Danita in the building. We got Majestic Queen up in the building. We got, oh, God, this thing didn't shift it. We got Will Willow up in the building. Talk to me. Yes, wow, because, because the thing is, like Minister Eric Clark said, I get to choose how I feel about it. So I can come into a room full of haters and turn them into all cheerleaders because of how I feel about myself. I can come into the room and I can turn through the anointing of God. I can turn your frown into a smile. I can turn my worst hater, my worst critic into my best friend. I have people that I meet that hate pastors and they hate the church. But after they meet Pastor Jamal, they're like, I never seen God this way. I want to come visit your church. I want to come on this line because I never seen it that way. And we have to be atmosphere changers, mind changers. We are the tastemakers of the world because we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. That means when I come into darkness, I eradicate darkness because I am light. I'm not trying to shine light. I am light. Oh, God. Tell somebody, I am the light. Woo! Yes! I am the light. You know, we, we shift we shift the atmosphere and, and me and my brother Ed, we talk about this all the time that when God comes back, and he judges all of us because we all going to have to have that meeting with him. He's not going to ask you, you know, what did you do based on what somebody else did to you? He's not going to be like, oh, well, I know they made fun of you. I know they bullied you. I know they hurt your feelings. I know they broke your heart. I know they cheated on you. I, I know they attacked you. I know the church was full of hypocrites. No, he's going to say, right. what did what you do? Did <laughs> How, how did how did you respond? Because I told you to be right. fishers of me. I told you to light up the world. I told you to be the salt of the earth, not right. to be salty. Come on oh, God. Now. So, you know, we, we full of excuses. I was one of the people. I don't got to go to church and praise God. They full of hypocrites, yada, yada, yada. But it's hypocrites everywhere. everywhere. It's hypocrites at church. It's hypocrites at your job. It's hypocrites in your family. We've all right. been hypocrites. So, you know, when Jesus come back, he's not going to be looking for that response. He's going to say, well, I sent you to that church to destroy Woo! the hypocrisy. I sent you to that church to destroy the religion. I sent you to that church to show, to show people how to be a real believer, how to be someone that say I love Jesus and got a t-shirt on, but actually is nice, actually is kind, actually does forgive people when they do you wrong. So it's not an excuse when we say, you know, the church is full of full of haters and all this stuff. Okay, well, what are you going to be? You know, what, what are you going to do? And that's what I had to do in my own ministry. I could sit here and say, well, he didn't do this. She didn't do that. They did this to me. I mean, I've been attacked by mega preachers. I've had a whole ministry come to destroy me, to cut my head off. And I had to decide to be the bigger person, to walk in there, still be loving, still be kind. And I never wanted to preach. I just wanted to please God. I never asked to be a senior pastor. But because God saw our yeah. hearts to you, he raised us up because he said, you can love the very ones that tried to kill you, that ripped up your business card, that, that borrowed money from you and never paid you back. They have straight slanted your name. And I'm using you to speak life into those same people. And because I can trust you, I'm going to raise you. And that's what that is what God is looking for, mature followers of Christ, not people that's going to say, I love God. And then as soon as somebody do you wrong, now you want to leave the church or you want to get mad or you want to get on Instagram and start beefing with people. Yeah. That's not God. God is a loving God, a forgiving God, yes, and a just is. God. But he's mercy. Because I know he's forgiving me. Because y'all, I done did some stuff. Woo. You hear me? <laughs> Let this Pastor Jamal fool you. Yes, I didn't been in the streets. I didn't stole some stuff. I didn't pull it up. Do you understand? But but because God has forgiven me, man, I have to forgive people that have done me wrong. I have to forgive people. That don't mean I got to keep dealing with you now. But I have to forgive you when I see you. Hey, how are you? But you know, I don't have to be in best friends with you. I don't have to jump in the bed with you. But I have to forgive you because if I don't forgive you, 
Ah, it's not I forgiveness. Have that. <laughs> yes, forgiveness is so important. It really is. And like I just I don't think we realize as a society and even as believers of Christ that we are powerful. Like we have so much power yes, in bro. us. Like like we were saying, we can't I wanna go yes, back bro. to that. We can change our lives. We can change the atmosphere just by our own Man. mind and our own heart and our own spirit. We can change it for the good or for the bad, but we all should be hoping and working towards changing the things around us for the good, impacting people's life for the good, changing whatever negativity we see, doing what we can to be a seed to help and to change things. Yeah. And, and you know what? I want to yeah, destroy this let me relief right quick and then I'm I'm gonna go to a close at some point. But this life is so good. Like this is just so powerful. But the the thing once we get to like uh late twenties and stuff like that, it's like we can't keep saying this is just how I always been. <laughs> you know, I hear so many people say <laughs> but this is just how I am. Yeah. But it's like, I'm not talking about your personality. I'm talking about, you know, those unhealthy habits that we have developed that we say. There we, we go. Always Amen. Been. I've Free. always been a blunt person. Yeah, but you can change how you talk to people, right? I've I've always That's been right. a person that That's right. speaks my mind. And, or I've always been this way. I've always thought this way. I've always had this certain man or this certain woman. But in 2022, God is trying to get you out of how you've always been and what you've always done. And it's time to do something right. different. Now, your personality, right. who you are, like, I'm talking That's about right. your in your purpose and it is bringing positivity and stuff now that i'm not saying to change but you know like i said these unhealthy habits that we have developed that do affect people or affect our environment or hinder us those are the things that we should be intentional about intentional about changing and not just saying well this is how i am this is how i always been if it's not building somebody up, if it's not if it's not helping people and, and making the world a better place or making your atmosphere a better place, you can't tell me that that's something that you need to stay doing. Yeah, that's just laziness. That's 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 laziness and pride. And I think I think one reason why we have made it so far in life. And when I say that, it's being able to stand throughout all the adversity and not look like what we've been through is because we are able to adapt and adjust and grow right. no matter what. You know, if I said, well, this is just how I am, I would have right. never talked. I would have I would have never if I had to listen to them, I would not. Right. I would be dead. <laughs> you, you, get, you get what I'm saying? So so if I only do what I've always done, I will only have and be right. what I've always been. You know what I'm saying? To get something different, you're going to have to do something different. And in 32, almost 33 years, I'm going to keep doing something yeah. different every day. If, if if I went this way to go home, you know, then maybe I need to go another way to go home today. You know what I'm saying? You know, if, if I've been in a church for three months and I'm not seeing no change, then maybe I need a new pastor. Maybe I need to come see, you know, all about change, Pastor Jamal, Elder T. Air, Minister uh, T. Wano, Minister Eric, and Pastor Elam and Five Prophets and all these people. Elder, you know what I'm saying? Because that's another thing I keep hearing. Well, my last church, my last, okay, this ain't your last church. This ain't your last husband. This ain't your last wife. This ain't your last friend. This ain't your last business. This yes. is the new thing, oh God. Yes, yes, a new thing. That's what God is calling us to. Man, I'll mess this live up to you. Don't mess with me. And I'm telling you guys, this live is just has been a blessing. There's so many good things that you can take out of it. And I encourage all, all right. of you. At first, That's we right. had a little bit of technical problems, but we stuck with it. We were consistent and we said we were going to work through it. And I encourage you all, when you have time, to go back and listen to this because Pastor Jamal dropped so many spiritual bombs. I dropped so many spiritual bombs. The things that he wanted said on the chat because her video was acting crazy. We dropped so many spiritual bombs and it's something that you have to listen to and get into the routine of doing these things. I'm not saying that you're going to grasp it all in this setting or today, but it's just 
having that desire to want better. We have to want better in 2022. Wherever you are in your life, by the time it's December 2022, all of us, I feel like, should be in a better place. It's just in our minds. I'm telling you, you have accomplished something because your mind is the biggest battlefield. Your mind is going to be the thing that makes or breaks you. So if every day your goal is to do something to strengthen your mind and better your mind and feed your mind with more positive stuff and the word of God, you cannot go wrong. It may seem like sometimes it's not working, but you have to stay on that routine of doing these things to make your life better. How did I, if, if it wasn't for me changing my mind, I would still, I know I would be dead by now, but I would still be an addict. I would still be Come an on, alcoholic. Somebody. I would still Come hate on, myself somebody. so much. I would still have all of these battles in my mind, but I said no more. I had came to that place where I wanted better for myself. And once you come to that place and you know who you are and whose you are, Man, nothing can dial out that fire in you that just yearns to be better in time. Right. I'm telling you, you I've been following Christ for about, I would say, probably 10 years now. And I'm telling you, no matter what has happened, no matter what challenges have happened, no matter what I've lost or anything like that, it's the fire in me that wants to encourage other people. It's the fire in me that wants to be a better person all around. It's the fire in me that I could be homeless without anything and I'm over here giving other homeless people food. Or I could be I could be doing, right. you know, on it's my right. last and still have the 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 uh, compassion to help somebody else, no matter what I'm going through. So it's just that fire. Once you know who you are, once you have set that standard, once you have made that intentional that I'm going to win, I'm going to go to a higher level, it's like nothing can stop it. And I promise you, as long as you don't quit, you will make it. I'm telling you. I know... All of y'all out here are it's going slow. through different stages in your life. I don't know everything that's going on with you, but I want you to know that you have two, well, three people, Kiwana's on the chat. You have three people right here who care. We don't have to know you. We don't have to converse with uh-huh. you, but know that we right. care. This is our duty. This is our mission to speak about these things to help you guys. I'm not saying we have it all together. We have our struggles, but what we do have is our experiences from what we've been through so that we can share it with you guys so that it can let you see that you're not alone that you have people here that are praying for y'all all of you that love y'all that truly want the best for y'all so in 2022 stop giving in to those depressing thoughts start switching your thoughts being intentional about thinking about what you're thinking, thinking about who you're spending time with, making it intentional, thinking about what am I listening to all the time? What am I looking at all the time? Okay, I may be looking at this too much. Let me go look at something more positive. I may be listening to this too much. Let me go look at something more positive. I may just be thinking these crazy thoughts way too much. Let me get my mind back right. You know, it's just about making sure that we examine ourselves, right. not not your neighbor, but ourselves every day to make sure we are in a place that when that opportunity comes, because I'm telling you, it's coming. I feel it in the atmosphere. It's all really here. It's just waiting for us to get into the position to receive it. Once we do get into that position, it's it's like we won't have to get ready because we are ready to embrace it and to do what God has called us to do. Pastor Jamal, I want to thank you so much for being a part of this. I mean, you truly um, just... You amaze me every day by your mind, by your heart, by your spirit. I'm honored to be your wife. I'm honored to be your business partner. And do you have anything else that you want to say, any remaining remarks before we end this live tonight? Yeah, I want to I wanna say this to help somebody because I've been lost and I've been lost in the sea yeah. of my thoughts. And and I want to I wanna encourage everyone because from the biggest – most successful from the from the archbishop, the billionaire, down to the homeless person begging for food right now. Um, we all are confronted right. with negative thoughts. Yeah. It's a part of the human, it's a part of the human experience. It's a part of the the fall, you know, being born into the world, a world of sin. You can have 
everything in the world given to you, you're still going right. to have negative thoughts. So I want yeah. y'all to know that that's exactly. okay. okay. You, it's okay. You have, you have a mind, but don't, don't, don't give in to the thoughts and make them become a belief yeah. system that becomes your life. And this is how, this is what you can use to help you. Excuse me. This is how you know what thoughts to go with. It's what you're thinking born out of fear yeah. or love. Because if it's out of fear, then we already know it's a thought yeah. we don't need to listen to. Because God is not giving us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So if it's born out of love, we know that it's going to yeah. give me power. And it's coming from a sound mind. If it's born out of fear, then we know yeah. it's not from love. And it's not going to give me power. It's going to weaken me. And it's not going to give me a sound mind. Right. It's going to give me a crazy mind. So we have, to, we, have to, we have to ask ourselves, is the thought that I'm having, all right, uh, Pete Shirley, is the thought that I'm having coming from fear or love? And I want to have thoughts that are coming from love. I want to have thoughts that are coming from God because God is love and he gives us peace. He gives us joy. We all have fear, but we don't have to right. live in fear. So that, that's what I want to leave people that you have the choice to choose what thoughts you're going to continue yeah. to perpetuate. And when you have a spiral of negative thoughts, you know, that, that, that comes from um, yeah. anxiety. That's why the Bible says, don't be anxious. But then a lot of Christians are like, well, the Bible says don't be anxious. Don't have a spirit of fear. Okay, that doesn't mean that you're not going to have fear for thoughts. You know, you got to be realistic and relatable to people. Don't be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good, as my dad says. You know, but but give people the tools that when you have the thoughts, okay, let me write these thoughts down. Okay, let the okay. I'm having the thought that I'm no good. Okay, is that true? Of course it's not. You know, that might just be roots in in something uh that I haven't dealt with yet. You know what I'm saying? Okay, uh I feel like killing myself today. Oh, we know that's not a thought of love there, so we're gonna scratch that one right on now. You know, we're not gonna go with that one. You know, I I'll take a hundred right. no's on that. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then you had a thought, oh, I'm looking good today. I'm smelling good today. I know I took a shower yeah. at least. You know what I'm saying? You know, find something that you're grateful about and then Sorry. bounce off of that. You know, have a great a gratitude journal and start focusing on the thoughts that you know yeah. come from love. You can't go wrong with reading the Bible. You can't go wrong with prayer. You can't go wrong with surrounding yourself with positive people. You just, okay. you can never go wrong yes. with those Oh, that is so good. That is so good. Not that we won't have those thoughts. That's not what we're saying. We will, you will have negative thoughts. It's just not dwelling in that, not making it like Pastor Jamal said, a belief system. Just yeah. letting them go. When they come, letting them go. Is this, well, thinking about it, is this fear or is this love? If it's not love, I have to let that go because that's not going to serve me at it's all. <laughs> Constantly thinking about the negativity or whatever is not going to serve you. It's not. But remember, this is a journey. This is a process. We are here for you. We've been where you've been, and we go through similar things that you're going through. So this is nothing foreign to us. So we are always here for you guys if y'all need to talk. Free to Be Us is going to come back next month, episode five. going to have another special guest. And uh -oh. this thing is going to keep on going once a month. For now, we're <laughs> speaking. We are free to be us. You are free to be you. Don't ever forget it. The way you are naturally, whatever God has caused you to do, you are free to do that. Walk in that and don't let nobody stop you from accomplishing what God has told you to do. You all are great. You all are powerful. If you could just mm -hmm. recognize the power that you hold in yourself, that everything you need to be what you have been called to do and everything you need to be great is already inside of you. You just got to embrace it. And in everything that you do, know that you are great and that God has a great plan for you. So, Pastor Jamal, thank you so much again for joining this Free to Be Us. You're going to be on here so much more. Thank you for the words of wisdom. Thank you for sharing your experiences. And just thank you for being a part of this. Thank you to every single person that got on. I appreciate it. We appreciate it so much. Never think 
that anything that you guys do for us, all the views, all the liking, whatever you have done, we appreciate it from the bottom of our heart. Tell somebody about Free to Be Us because we want everybody to be empowered. And you had something to say? No, I'm just in agreement. Love y'all. Love everybody. Tell people you know about Free to Be Us. This is not for me to get famous or anything like that. I'm doing this because God put it on my heart to do it. And I and I can't, I can't not talk about the things that, that God has put it on my heart to talk about. And a lot huh? T N. It's like you said, God put a mandate on me. <laughs> God put a mandate on me, I'm telling you. When he spoke free to be us, I put in rest until I started putting things into play and now i'm really seeing how it's reaching people and it's going to continue to because that is our goal to help people to reach them to help them to get to a better place in their life so guys this was episode four free to be right. us instagram live kiwi the diva was on here and i want to thank her again so much for just dealing with the um, technical difficulties and just staying on and still being in the conversation salute to you sis Salute to everybody who interacted, everybody who watched. We love y'all so much, and we're going to see you next month on the next Free to Be Us, episode five. I'm praying for you all. I love you all, and see you next time. Bye, Free to Be Us.